he comes, here he comes, there's the trumpets, there's the drums, here he comes, hop along Cassidy, here My saddle pal, Red Connors, and I were in Clear Rock to investigate cattle smuggling. Three months ago, the Department of Agriculture closed the border to Mexican cattle after an outbreak of hoof and mouth disease. But Mexican cattle had been found at slaughter pens in the United States. As we passed the court building, I saw my old friend, Judge Edwards. Cassidy. Red. How are you, Judge? Hoppy, you're just the man I want to see. Come on in. So, you can see why I needed a United States Marshal. Here are the extradition papers. You know, I hate to do this because I've always liked the boy. Marco Rodriguez charged with killing a Mexican citizen on Mexican soil. What's his status? He obtained a permit to enter this country several months ago. He's been working as a clerk, saving his money for his education. I see. And who is this uh, Jose Hernandez that signed the complaint? Well, he's a Mexican rancher from across the border. In fact, it was one of his men that Marco killed. Oh, excuse me. Surely. Dorothy, good, good morning. morning. How do you do, John? Judge? I want... Oh, I'm sorry, Judge. I didn't know you were busy. I'll see you later. No, no, don't go. Come on in. I want you to meet a couple friends of mine. The judge introduced Red and me to John Preston and his niece, Dorothy. I knew Preston by reputation. He was one of the wealthiest ranch owners along the border. As a matter of fact, I just stopped by to put up bail for Marco Rodriguez. <laughs> I'm sorry, John, but bail isn't acceptable in this case. But he's innocent. Marco never even carried a gun. It's out of my hands, Dorothy. He'll be extradited to Mexico and they will try him there. Oh, but... There, there, honey. Maybe it's all for the best. He wasn't good enough for you, anyhow. Oh, you never did like him. But if I can't marry Marco, then I just... I... I wonder if it would do any good for me to talk to this Hernandez. Well, if you could persuade him to drop the charges pending further investigation. I could hold up the extradition. Well, his ranch joins mine below the border. I'll see him as soon as possible. Oh, thanks, Uncle John. <laughs> That's all right, honey. I'm sorry to have interrupted your meeting, gentlemen, with our personal business, but it was nice meeting you anyway. That's quite all right. Hey, that's a good-looking sombrero. I don't think I've ever seen one like it. Well, no, I have them made to order. 
see. Well, it's nice to have met you, Mr. Cassidy. Goodbye. Mr. Connor. Dorothy. John. Goodbye, Goodbye Judge. Preston was one of the border ranchers I wanted to question about the cattle smuggling. But I figured our talk could wait till later. I'll see you later then. Thanks. Red and I contacted several other ranchers, but none seemed to know about any cattle smuggling. There was something strange about the way the men were racing their horses. killed yourself with the fall you did off that horse. Who are you? Marco Rodriguez. Those men hold up the jail. Take me with them. I do not wish to go, but they kill me if I refuse. Glad you got one of them. The other two got away. Red, this is Marco Rodriguez. Howdy. Rodriguez? That's right. Is this the Marco the judge is holding in jail uh, to deport? Was holding. You know who those men were? No, senor. Marco told us he didn't know who the masked men were who had kidnapped him. He insisted they weren't friends of his from Mexico. In fact, he thought they were Americans. We started back with him to Clear Rock. On the way, we heard the whole story. Marco had been riding out to call on Dorothy when he saw some men running cattle through a border fence. When he turned to investigate, several shots rang out. He saw a man fall and rode toward him. Next thing he knew, two riders came up accusing him of murder and insisting he was on the Mexican side of the border. Marco protested he didn't even carry a weapon. But they pointed to a gun in the brush, said he was a liar, and took him to the sheriff. He was almost certain that the two men who took him from the jail were the same two who had ridden up and accused him of murder. He was sure of one thing, though. He had been framed. Marco seemed sincere and honest to me. I could understand why the judge hadn't wanted to deport him and why Dorothy loved him. What's more, I believed he had been framed. Kidnapping a federal prisoner is a serious offense. It certainly is men took quite a chance. But why, Hoppy? I've got a hunch of some connection between Marco's kidnapping and this cattle smuggling. And I'll buy Hoppy's hunches, Judge. So will I. But in the meantime, I cannot accept the responsibility of detaining Marco in this country. Now, here are the extradition papers. I'm sorry, son. You did the best you could, Judge. Gracias. Marco, they can't take you away. They must, Mia Marta. But the judge said, that... can't you wait until I'm my... I'm sorry, miss. Come on, Marco, let's go.
trip to Santa Rosa was delaying my investigation of cattle smuggling. But maybe I'd find some of the answers below the border. I said he's on his way here with a prisoner now. See, si, Senor Hernandez. I want Rodriguez locked up, so there'd be no chance of escape. Oh, you need have no fear of that, Senor. There must be a speedy trial, Sanchez, and a conviction for murder. But, Senor, it is the court who pronounces the sentence and the day of execution. But if you want to stay in Santa Rosa's district attorney, you'll follow my orders. Marco Rodriguez must be tried tomorrow and executed the next day. We had turned Marco over to the Mexican district attorney. Red was wondering what the boy had meant when he warned us to investigate cattle smuggling on this side of the border. I'm sorry to have kept you waiting, Senor Cassidy. Oh, that's all right. Thanks to you, the boy is safely behind bars. My government is indebted to you. Thank you very much. Red and I are always glad for the chance, though, to visit Santa Rosa. And you are always most welcome, Senor. Thank you. Have you checked uh, Marco's case? It has greatly disturbed me, but the evidence is conclusive. I can do nothing but ask the court for a conviction. Well, you seem pretty sure that he's guilty. It is my duty to prosecute. Of course, the final verdict rests with the court. I knew that verdict would find Marco guilty of murder. I had to act fast to save his life. I'm sorry you are leaving our city so soon, Senor Cassidy. Oh, but we're not leaving. But you already delivered the prisoner. We are also here on a secret government job. And uh, you might be able to help me out, if you will. You need but to ask, senor. Marco Rodriguez gave the United States judge some valuable information about embargoed cattle being smuggled across the border. Cattle smuggling? But I did not know this. Oh, yes. And he might be called for further investigation. Now, you might be able to delay that trial for me, huh? What you ask presents a problem. But I will try to arrange with Judge Carrillo to grant your government's wish. Thank you very kindly. We'll see you later. Adios. better swallow them. We got work to do. No, querida mia. Your uncle has not been here. But he promised me. Well, yeah. My trial is tomorrow. Perhaps he will come then. But we can't wait till tomorrow. I'm getting you out of here now. But that will be too dangerous. It's more dangerous for you to stay here and be convicted. See, si. Perhaps if we can see Jose Hernandez. And convince him you're innocent. The first Mexican rancher I talked with said that Jose Hernandez bought whatever cattle he had for sale. A month ago, he had sold him 50 head. Another man said that he, too, had been selling his beef to Hernandez. It appeared that all the ranchers around Santa Rosa sold their stock to Hernandez. Our next move was to head for his ranch.
No estoy en casa, pero los americanos. Sí, señor. Quiero que mis hombres vengan pronto. Uh -huh. I've still got a mouthful of words. Careful, they'll choke you. I'd like to see Senor Hernandez. Senor Hernandez is away. Not here. Nobody here. He's away, huh? <laughs> but please, Senor, you shouldn't do Come that. On. that. My boss will scold me. <laughs> Red, say something to him in Spanish, will but you? Senor, please, Quiet, don't do Buster. that. Quiet, Buster. My partner wants to write a note. But he can't do that. I mean... Uh... Hoppy, I think that darn Hernandez is hiding in there. You do? That servant acted mighty suspicious. He certainly did. Shall we follow them? Oh, that's the last we'll see of Mr. Cassidy around here. We checked on the ranchers. They told him they sold their cattle to you. Yeah, which they did legitimately. He hasn't any proof. Ah, well, let's see what he has to say. Mr. Hernandez, when you see John Preston... Tell him he left his hat on your desk in the living room. Or was it your hat? Cassidy. We're going after him. But you said... Never mind what I said. Forget what I said. Cassidy knows too much. If we ride hard, we can catch him before he gets to the border. Marco, get inside. Inside. Girl, she tricked me. What girl? The, the, the Americana, Dorothy Preston. They tied me up, took my keys away, and freed Marco. Where do they go, you know? Ah, senor, is muy malo. They go to see Hernandez. Hernandez? Come on. I'll go around the back.
Stephanie's pal and Sanchez are sneaking up on us. I don't see Cassidy. You stay here and keep him covered. I'll keep an eye on Dorothy and Marco. you at home this time. Untie your knees. Come on. What do you mean, forcing your way into my house? The district attorney at Clear Rock wants to ask you a few questions. Well, let's go. Hey, you're in Mexico now, not the United States. You got no authority here, so get out. I'm afraid you're mistaken. I brought Senor Sanchez along with me. Well, I'm glad you did. He's my man, and he'll do exactly what I tell him to do. I don't think so. You forget the position you're in. So do you, Cassidy. Get your hands up. Good work, Becker. Where's Carter? He got hit. Take him outside and finish him. It'll be a pleasure. Get your hands up. I'm all right, Harvey. Yeah, I'm all right. Senor, arrest these two for murder. I want to take them back to the States. With much pleasure, amigo. Get them out of here, Red. Well, I'll be. My own uncle. We'll talk about that later. <laughs> Preston and his men were in Clear Rock Jail, while Judge Edwards was busy untangling the Preston Hernandez double life. Murder and cattle smuggling would mean a stiff prison term. Marco was free to marry Dorothy, and Red finally swallowed that mouthful of words and understood about the black sombrero. <laughs> Hi, my young friends. You know, I've had a lot of letters in the last six or eight months about you not wearing your raincoats and your overshoes. Now, the reason you don't see Hoppy in a raincoat and overshoes is that I live in a country where there isn't too much rain. But you must always, when it is raining, wear your raincoats and your overshoes. And there's one more thought, too. Don't leave them at the schoolhouse. Bring them home, will you? I'll see you next week. And be sure and wear those, will you? There he goes, on his way, down the moonlit trail to where cowboys reign. Hop along, Cassidy. Hop along, Cassidy. He'll return soon again. There's no use to say goodbye until then. Hop along, 